Hello, you two. Oh my gosh, I feel like it has been forever, forever since I've been live, you guys. I miss you all so, 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 so much. I've had a birthday. I turned 39 years young and I am feeling so good, you guys. I'm up late tonight, so I have something on my screen. Hold on, it's bothering me. I'm up late. And I decided to come on in here and go live. I want to adjust my lighting, get my lighting together. Let's see. It's a little bit too bright. That kind of looks nice. I think I'll go with that. It's a little bit less intrusive. So hopefully you guys have been fantastic. I miss you all. I love you all. Um, shout out to my new subscribers. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for... Subscribing to this channel, it means a lot. You know, it means that you're crazy for one, because if you're subscribed to me, then you're absolutely crazy <laughs> in the best way possible. And shout out to my old subscribers. I love you all so, so much. And thank you for being here and just, you know, just being a part of this community that's constantly growing. And I think it's growing at the rate that I want it to grow. It's going growing at a rate that is pleasing to me. And I just, I'm so grateful for the people that I have. So thank you so much for being here. So anyway, you guys, so I want to pop on in here. You know, I have my sativa on deck. Uh, 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 uh. And the reason why I'm smoking sativa tonight, like, and you guys already know about sativas because I talk about sativas all the time on my channel. The reason why I'm smoking sativas at night because it's late here is because I have work to do work I have work like this is my book <clears throat> well my latest book that I use to write down my my things that I have to do you know for the day my daily task and I always talk about keeping a daily task book and so I go through these like so fast you guys because I'm literally one of those people to try to write down my goals daily. Now, over the weekend, I didn't use this book because I start working on Sunday night. I work on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And I work for myself. And those are my work days. Those are the days that I really attempt to get like my tasks done, you guys. So, And I usually stick with about six tasks a day. Now, you might find that you you know, do more. Okay. Cause maybe you're just one of those people that's you're just an animal when it comes to tasks. And so maybe, you know, you can handle like 10 tasks a day or something like that. But for me, you know, if I get six things, like six key things that need to be done, like, let me see if I can find an example. I'll just, for example, uh, check I'm in the process of, um, getting a trademark for, one of my companies and trademarking a name. So I have one of the tasks is to check the status of the trademark. Um, and then uh, other business tasks like, you know, check on uh, the status of a, a, a member or, oh, I got a spider crawling on my book. Hey, little guy. I don't like to kill spiders. <laughs> anyway, another task would be, um, contact this person from XYZ college, um, or create an agenda for your live video. If you're going to go live, like, um, on my Facebook group page, I have a Facebook group, two Facebook groups, as a matter of fact, one of them's free and one of them's paid. And my Facebook groups, both of them talk about how to launch your own CBD brand. And I give all sorts of valuable information. So, Anyway, so that would be an example of a task, create an agenda for my live Facebook group. Um, another example of a task would be writing for four hours. So <clears throat> I am a writer. That is one of the things that I do. You know, I create courses and all that good stuff. I used to be a college professor. You know, we've, we've talked about this, right, you guys? Right, 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 right. So Anyway, and right now, and the reason why I'm up is because I'm writing right now. Like I'm in the middle of this 
writing project. And I won't say in the middle. Well, maybe I am in the middle. I kind of feel like I'm like kind of near the end, but I could be in the middle once I edit it. <laughs> and I'm writing this book and I'll give you guys more information about it maybe later on. But but basically it concerns success factors for African-American female entrepreneurs. And it's related to a study that I did way back in the day uh, for my doctoral program. Uh, that's when I officially became Dr. B way back in the days. This is old news now, you guys. And I wrote this book and yada, yada, yada. And so this is kind of like, you know, years later, what I've learned um, not only from the people that I interviewed, but what I've learned myself, you know, from being an entrepreneur for all that time. I mean, I started my companies a long time ago. I got into the world of being an entrepreneur a long time ago. Um, and recently, I want to say in the last two years, um, actually more than that, I exclusively just started working for myself. Like no, no backup job, none of that, you know, just really working for me, not working for the colleges part-time or being an adjunct professor or anything like that, like 100% focusing on myself, not, you know, um, doing like uh, brand ambassador work like I've done in the past <clears throat> and all that jazz. Oh, let me make sure my volume is up, you guys. Okay, good. I just want to make sure you can hear me. Ciao. Ciao. Anyway, it doesn't matter when you catch this live, you guys. You can catch it in the morning. You can catch it in the night. Just make sure you catch the live. But anyway, so yeah, I have this writing project that I'm doing tonight. And probably some other things that I have to take care of. But this is like my main thing, just editing what I have written so far. And I printed up this book. And it's not, of course, nowhere near being done. Um, in my opinion, especially once, like I said, I edit it because once you edit things, like you chop things up and it's probably one of the reasons why it's taking me a while to do this book. Jeez. But I plan on having this book out soon and I'll give you guys more details about it. I'm always inspired by, you know, YouTubers that, you know, they have books and this, that, and the other thing. And, and some Sometimes YouTubers are paying for other people to write their books, and I don't really think there's anything wrong with that either. You know, it is what it is. However, for myself, I am going through the process of writing. I am a writer, and that's just what I do. There is another uh, YouTuber that writes books, and she writes like a, a lot of books. Like every time I turn around, <laughs> Every time I turn around, I feel like she's like, hi, I've been gone for a week. I'm sorry I wasn't up, able to upload videos because I wrote a book. And she's just so inspiring to me. And um, her name is Color Me Pink. I think that's her YouTube name. And first of all, her channel is amazing. So shout out to you, girl. I, I think she writes a lot of like um, fictions. Uh, and uh, I think her books are amazing. I think her personality is amazing. And I'm inspired by people who are just motivated to constantly just push themselves and succeed. And I mean, gosh, so she's like writing books every time I turn around. So it's like, surely I can... <laughs> This book is kind of like almost like a rewrite plus me adding stuff to it. So it's like, surely I can I can do this, right? Right. So anyway, shout out to all you guys out there who are striving and and you guys who are reaching your goals. You know, this channel is all about motivating people and, you know, and sending love out into the universe because I feel like that's what time it is. Like I'm totally on the love vibration always. Let me grab my coffee. So you guys, I still got the tag on the coffee cup. I got this cup from New Orleans, New Orleans. And oh my goddess, like I went to New Orleans uh, before my birthday. My birthday is April 19th and I went to Houston. Actually, I, I took a plane to Houston. That's where my parents are right now. And I visited them. And then my mom and I, we took a train from Houston to New Orleans and we stayed in the French quarters 
Um, and it was so amazing. Like it was so, so amazing. Oh, it looks like my live is like counting down to end the stream. I don't know if it's going to end like after 10 minutes. Maybe it is. So I better, or maybe it isn't. <laughs> Maybe it's just telling me that I've been on for 10 minutes. Child, listen, it's been so long since I've been live. I can't even tell you. I forgot how this thing works. You know what I mean? And YouTube recently changed something where you have to have so many subscribers in order to go live on your phone. You used to be able to go live on your phone. And I mentioned that because when I was out in New Orleans and I stayed in the French quarters with my mom, I was attempting to go live to kind of like just surprise you all and then be like, hey, you guys. And it would not let me. And I was like, really? But Anyway, New Orleans was fantastic. I loved it. There was a festival going on at the time uh, that we stayed there. And this is like, you know, I, don't, I guess Mardi Gras wasn't that long ago. So apparently after Mardi Gras, there's like a bunch of festivals that take place. And oh my gosh, there's like something like every weekend, you guys. So honey, there were people, I got my space heater on. There were people on top of people, on top of people, on top of people, on top of people on top of people. And I was right where I needed to be as far as like the hotel and everything. Um, and I just had a good time. Like I ate, like the first thing I ate when I got there was gumbo, right? Because you know, I'm a Creole woman and I love Creole and Cajun, original Acadian. We talked about that um, in the video I did on genealogy, which I'll probably do an updated video on that because I have a lot more information about my ancestry. I found my native tribe, you guys. I know who I'm connected to. Shout out to the Atapaca, the Mi'kmaq, and the Huma, the Huma native tribe, indigenous people. Uh, I'm, and I'm still doing research, you guys. Like I'm digging back. I'm going all the way back as far as I can. On one side, I went back to the 1500s and... So anyway, so I felt like, you know, going to New Orleans and staying in the French quarters, I felt like that was definitely part of like, <sighs> it was getting to know my folks. It was getting to know like my history um, in depth and being in that place where I know my ancestors were, you know, and some of them are, I just am not aware of it. Okay. Because the name Comier is very alive and well all over, all over in LeBlancs and all of that. There's just, it's very interesting history um, in New Orleans as it relates to Creoles, as it relates to free black people, you know, back in the day. And I, when I was in New Orleans, I did some tours and they were amazing. Just the history, you guys, like if you haven't gone to New Orleans, this was my first time going and I don't know what the hell took me so long. If you haven't gone to New Orleans, you guys, please go to New Orleans. It's definitely worth it. Like, seriously. Like, it's just one of those places that's just a melting pot of cultures. And then the history of the Germans in the area. And then the histories of the different, um, like, religious groups in the area. It's just fantastic. And then the history of voodoo. Uh, and then Mary Laveau, the voodoo queen of New Orleans. I was able to go to her grave, you guys. And it was amazing. Like, her family crest. Like, it was amazing. So I went to historic cemeteries. And, and I went to the voodoo shops. And I just was all in it. I was all in it. So let me show you some of the things that I brought back from New Orleans, okay? I got a lot of other stuff around me. I'm gonna put this to the side for now. So one of the things I brought back from New Orleans was this, or is this Original Publications Complete Book of Baths. And you can't, yeah, yeah you can see it. So this book is exactly what it sounds like. It's like a book of spiritual baths, like different baths you can do at different times. And in this particular case, on this page, it happens to have astrological baths. And like, for example, this is a bath that you would probably take if you were interested in capturing the energy of Saturn. And for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, 
you might want to look at some of my old videos. But anyway, it says Saturn is a planet of structure, which is very Saturn is important when it comes to, you know, it's a planet that you can use as energy to actually move you forward, to help you to maintain discipline, to help you to complete your tasks that are actually in your task list. Okay. So Saturn rules the skeleton, ligaments, teeth, hearing, and gallbladder. Saturn's herbs provide grounding, bathing, and then helps you to stay focused, what I just said, while involved in the pursuit of higher truth. So even like involved in the pursuits of your goals, okay? Herbs of Saturn balance karma. They work well when mixed with um, mercury type herbs. Use caution when working with Saturn as this is a planet of great changes. Absolutely. So of course you use Saturn when you want to make a change, you use the energy of Saturn to help you make that change. And so it has a bunch of different herbs that you can add to your bath to, to, um, to basically capture the energy of Saturn, so to speak. An example of these herbs would be hemp, <laughs> Holly, Irish moss, ivy, musk. Uh, these are some other things, skull cap, snake weed, and so on and so forth. So very interesting book. I just love it, you guys. And this book, chapter three, for example, talks about Psalms and your baths, like different rituals you can use using the book of Psalms, which I talk about all the time. Like there's a bunch of rituals you can use using that holy book of Psalms. And so I thought that was a really cool book. And here's another book that I grabbed. Uh -oh, there's my receipt. I get that. So this book right here is called the Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs. And I'm telling you, like, I love books that are about herbs because I feel like that's part of my life path. I mean, you guys know that I love cannabis. Like, I love cannabis. As a matter of fact, I'm about to smoke in a minute. I love cannabis. I'm all about it. I'm an advocate of the herb. I'm not just an advocate of cannabis. I'm an advocate of herbal remedies. I'm an av advocate of like natural remedies too. And so this book was very inspiring to me. And this was, you know, something that was suggested that I get while I was at the store, one of these uh, stores that I went into. But anyway, so here's an example. Like it talks about different herbs, uh, lotus. This is the lotus herb and it gives different folk names of the lo lotus herbs. Another name for the lotus would be the Egyptian lotus. Uh, the gender of that particular, of the lotus is feminine. The planet associated with it is the moon. The element associated with the lotus is water. The powers that the lotus brings would be protection, protection, and it says lock and opening. And then it talks about the different ritual uses that you can use with the lotus. Um, and it's just a beautiful book. And then it talks about the different magical uses that you can use uh, with the lotus flower. And so on and so forth. Even lettuce, lemongrass. I mean, you name it. So again, this is the Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical herbs. Very good book. I mean, you guys know our ancestors, like our ancestors were very much so tapped into this information. This is nothing new. It's just, you know, some of us are more aware of it than others. And I think in this day and age, you know, you're starting to see more people return to like you know, natural remedies and natural solutions just because, you know, they're just, you know, they're just looking for alternatives and there's nothing wrong with, you know, alternatives. And so that is a really good book. And I've totally, I haven't started like reading it cover to cover yet. However, just perusing it, I can see how it just has so much valuable information in there. So I got a lot of stuff from New Orleans, you guys. And I just, I had a lot of stuff. And I'm telling you, <laughs> I've literally been on a whirlwind. I mean, it, it, I had my birthday and everything like right after I had surprise parties. I had all sorts of stuff going on uh, during the, this month of April. It's just been a really beautiful, busy, 
um, testing, um, celebratory, and amazing month. Amazing month. So anyway, I also got this while I was in New Orleans. Oh, wait, did I get, I got this not while I was, well, not from a store in New Orleans, but I got this from Amazon online. I ordered it while I was in New Orleans. And I think the reason why is because I didn't see any um, card decks out there that I was really interested in bringing home with me. Plus, I had a smaller suitcase anyway because I like to travel light. And if I would have seen this, I probably would have gotten it anyway. Amazon and I was ordering this. And I had seen this, this um, deck before. And if you can't read it, this is the New Orleans Voodoo tar Tarot. And I, I'd seen this deck before and it was probably like, gosh, when did I see this deck? A long time ago. And I don't think I was ready. And I think at the time, the reason why I say I wasn't ready is because I, my, my understanding of the tarot was, was extremely limited, extremely, extremely, extremely. And I'm not saying I'm a tarot expert now by any stretch of the imagination. However, I know more now than I did back then. And I think sometimes when you don't have knowledge of something, and you come across something like this, you know, and I actually had seen some of the images on there. I was like, mm, you know, I, the Holy Spirit at the time was like, no, not, not right now. So I had to like take baby steps. And I started like with the basic tarot, um, which would be like the uh, Raider, Raider, Ryder Wyatt. I'm probably pronouncing that incorrect because you know, whatever. But I think it's called the Raider, Ryder Wyatt, Raider, Ryder, Ryder Wyatt deck. But anyway, it's the very common, like basic tarot. Like when you start tarot, that's typically, you know, it's the old school, old school deck. Um, and I think the people that created that deck, I think they came from the uh gosh is it the golden dawn is that it sounds it you guys if you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about but the golden dawn i think some type of a secret organization back in the day and then i know there was a woman that actually uh she did the illustrations on the tarot deck and this is a very common tarot deck it's like world renowned tarot deck like i said this is the basic tarot deck that you would get if you're starting off with tarot, because, you know, it's like, you know, it's solid. It's a solid deck. And I think the lady that illustrated, did the illustrations was also a Creole woman. And so that's even more interesting, you know. Anyway, and I, her image is actually, I think, on the box. So if you get the Raider, Ryder, Ter, Ryder Wyatt tarot deck, I think it's Ryder Wyatt or either Wyatt Sometimes you just see a writer. Sometimes you see Wyatt, and sometimes you see Writer Wyatt on the on the tarot deck that I'm talking about. But anyway, I think you'll also see uh, her picture on some of those decks. So at least it's on the deck that I have. So I started there, and even like prior to that, there's so many like so many tarot decks, you guys. So many tarot decks. Like, and even before tarot decks, I was pretty much. Um, using the oracle cards and before oracle cards you know i'm just using my my sixth sense which is ultimately what you use anyway the tarot deck the oracle cards you know they're all tools you know the the real magic and it the, is from within it comes from within it comes from within it comes from a place that's deep uh it comes from uh source wisdom yeah, it comes from source wisdom and these are tools. So anyway, I said all that to say that I did my homework, you guys, and I started studying the tarot and getting to know the tarot more and watching documentaries on the tarot and reading books, you know, some books about the tarot and then, you know, reading like little study guides about the tarot and 
you know, and just doing my homework. And of course, always like you're always doing your homework. You're always doing your homework when you want to improve yourself, improve your life, improve your situation, improve your circumstance. You are always doing your homework. And so anyway, I said all that to say that by the time, by the time I come across this and I felt like because I was in New Orleans, I had you know, went to Mary Louveau's grave. I paid my homage, 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 homage. Ja, listen. I paid my re, my respects there. I, I, you know, left an offering. I did all of that good stuff at various places throughout New Orleans, various sacred places, at least places that I felt the Holy Spirit tell me were sacred places. So I felt like I had gone through an initiation of sorts. And I felt like I was now qualified to get into this information. And I'm so, I'm so glad that, first of all, I waited. I'm so glad that I waited or allowed for the right timing to get into this information because this tarot deck right here, it's not playing with you. <laughs> It's not playing with you at all. And I felt like I had to get, I had to get an understanding of, you know, more of what voodoo was all about because I know that, you know, I'm connected to it in some way, a shape and form because of my ancestral bloodline. And so I wanted to just get more information about it, just like anything, you know, I don't, I'm not one of those people that just like to jump into stuff, you know, especially like spiritual things, you know, you gotta be mindful. At least I do. I am because that's how the Holy Spirit works with me. Like, you know, I just don't jump into stuff without like doing my homework, you know, without, you know, making sure that this is the direction that that the Holy Spirit is leading me. You know what I mean? And I feel like there's a time, there's, for me, there's timing. Timing is everything. And so I'm so glad that I waited because when I started like divining and, and pulling information out of the ethers and using this tarot deck as a tool to, to, to divine information, I got some interesting information. And this is <laughs> like, this this tarot group or this tarot set is just, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. It's very, very powerful. Like the ancestors are not playing with this deck. It's very holy. It's very righteous. And it's very, very deep. Like it, this, it's deeper. It's deeper than like any other tarot deck that I have. And I, since getting the Ryder Wyatt deck, I have since like gotten other decks that are like, I got so many different types of tarot decks because like I said, I'm, I'm studying tarot. And so different decks have different approaches and all that jazz, but they kind of stick with the same Ryder Wyatt format. This deck kind of, you know, it, it, it has some of the Ryder Wyatt form format, but then it also has its own thing. And it is like just so amazing. And they say like when you when you uh, when you are like a reader or something like that, sometimes and, and when I say they say the experts or the so-called experts or other spiritual readers will say um, you want to have a deck that is exclusive for you, like exclusive for your readings that you do on yourself and, and, and a deck where you're not using it for your clients' readings, for example, if you have clients. So this is that deck for me. This is that ancestral deck. <laughs> like seriously. So this deck I use exclusively for my own readings and I don't use them for anybody else's readings like because that's what the Holy Spirit told me and I really enjoy using this deck as powerful and serious and intense and not messing around as this deck is because I just feel like you know I, you have to res you have to respect it you have to respect it first before you get into it and so 
I do, and I'm all into it. So I absolutely love this deck. I stayed on that deck for a while, right? Another thing I got while I was in New Orleans was this. Oh, let me reach over here. <clears throat> I got this. This is some rose water, and I got it from, it says, Mary Laveau's House of Voodoo on here. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? You know how people like put their hands up? You can see that. And there's no need for me to do all that. You can see where it says like Mary Laveau's House of Voodoo. Um, <laughs> this has got to be like the best rose water I'm just going to pour some in my hand that I have ever in my life encountered. And I have lots of rose water. Um, I've had lots of rose water cross my path, okay, in the last few years. And I will say, I mean, I've even, like, made my own rose water, but not, like, you know, um, uh, what do you call boiling the the flowers or anything, but just basically like putting the flowers in spring water, the rose petals in spring water. Oh wait, hold on, you guys. Jeez. Bracelet. Wanna? There we go. But anyway, so I've had my my fair share of rose water, and <laughs> but honey, that rose water right there is just it's amazing it's so amazing i mean i can't even explain it to you so i mean it's just it's hydrating it's refreshing it the scent is just intoxicating um i put it in a spray bo bottle along with some um gosh what's in this one i think Maybe jojoba oil, maybe. But anyway, so this is what I do. And that'll dry up in a minute. I use it in my hair. Oh, yeah. It's wonderful for your locks and stuff like that. Mm. So refreshing. Mm. And what I'll do is I'll keep that on my altar and, you know, keep it holy. <clears throat> and I'll follow up with like some frankincense and myrrh oil. Chad, what you talking about? And don't let me have some oud oil. Then it's really on and popping. And I do have oud oil. Don't let me put it on me. But anyway, so I got that rose water and I've added that to my ritual. And it is absolutely amazing. And just look at how what it does to your skin. Just look at how, like, you know, how vibrant my skin looks just because of the rose water. Um, and so it's rose water in there, and I think, like I said, some jojoba oil in there, and maybe some um, spring water I use. But that's it. So what else, you guys? Oh, let's go ahead and light one up, shall we? And then I'm going to go ahead and, and skedaddle, skedaddle. But I wanted to come on in here and say, hey, I love you all. Like, seriously. Um I have a few, oh, I still have a lot of green in this pipe. I have a few videos that I have to do because I have to do them. Um, one video is going to be about, I want to do a follow-up to my ancestry because I feel like that's an important video. And I also, let me find my lighter. Oh, my God. You know how you get hungry all of a sudden? I got hungry. All of a sudden. Anyway, and another video I want to do is going to be about um, this piece of art that I have now, uh, which is an amazing piece of art. 
Um, I got it for my birthday. Um, I'm going to do a video about it. So I won't talk about it now, but amazing. Mmm, so good. Raisinets. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. 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 Y'all, excuse me. You know what? Ain't nobody on here, no way, right about now. So, I'm at liberty. Okay, so anyway, I'm smoking sativa and. Right now, I'm working with this nasty candy jack. Candy jack by Bear Farms. I've been loving Bear Farms lately. They've been doing me right. I love their pre-rolls. Bomb.com. Because there's like Keith in there, I'm pretty sure. Okay, let me light the bowl right. Mm. <coughs> 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 when it slaps you in the face, <coughs> when it slaps you in the face, that's how you know. Oh, Ooh. look, grief in the morning time. Let's get some water on that. No. <clears throat> Sometimes people are like put off by the cannabis cough. They're like, oh my God. Oh my God. It sounds like you're coughing your lungs up. But guess what? Cannabis is an expectorant. So if you have something in your lungs that needs not be in your lungs, it's going to help you to get rid of that, which is not a bad thing. So cannabis is completely different than like a, a person who smokes cigarettes and, and their kind of cough. <laughs> so, but of course, if you're not the type of person to smoke cannabis, you absolutely don't have to. Like you can, you can eat it, you know, you can rub it on your skin, you could Drink it in your tea. You could, you know, put it in your smoothie. I mean, you know, there's so many different ways to consume cannabis, you guys. Like, I enjoy all of the above, actually, um, including smoking it. And, and I didn't think I was going to like smoking cannabis, but when I turned 36, I started and I took my first um, puff of cannabis, I think, Probably like maybe at 37 years old, I think. Well, at 36, I started with CBD. And then I started taking products with THC, like edibles. And then, <clears throat> and then I started smoking cannabis. And I tried it for the first time. I remember I couldn't sleep. It was one night. I just could not sleep. And Boothang, you know... He was already, you know, of course he smoked cannabis. <clears throat> and, you know, I guess he was in the industry and he'd been smoking cannabis and all that. I wasn't smoking cannabis. I hadn't reached that point yet. But, and I just, I couldn't sleep one night. And then he was like, well, do you want to try this indica? <clears throat> and at the time I was like, so desperate. I was like, yes, please. If it's going to help me sleep. It was like 2 a.m. And I had to be at work. This is when I had, like, we had jobs. <laughs> and I had to be at work, you know, um, working at the dispensary. It wasn't even, like, it wasn't, like, a tough job or anything like that. But I had to be responsible for people. I was, like, you know, uh, one of the managers there and all that good stuff. So I felt responsible. So I felt like I had to be there. So, of course, so I wanted to get some rest. And I tried this strain that he had, and it's called Black Diamond. So, so good. And I took like one puff of that, and I was just like, oh my God, 
the way that my body felt so relaxed, the way that, you know, the smoke, um, taste, you know, the, it was woodsy. It was nice. It was, uh, the, the quality of the cannabis was like top shelf, actually beyond top shelf, private reserve. You know, I was smoking, um, <clears throat> a strain that was made by a farm called Vegan Buddha. So at the time, you know, that company was around. I don't know if they're still around, but they used to be one of my favorite cannabis companies out there because the quality of their flower is superb and they would grow things veganically, you know, without using any type of like harmful chemicals or anything like that. So it was very high quality flower. And I started with that. I started with that. So, you know, anyway, and so it was a very good experience. <laughs> it was a very good experience. And I loved it. And <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> and I love what it you know, did to my body and how it made me feel my body, ver feel in my body versus <clears throat> years, 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 years. When I was 18 years old, I tried a cigarette, like smoking a cigarette for the first time when I was 18 years old and I was in the military and the people around me were like, everybody used to smoke, you know, as a police officer, everybody <clears throat> would smoke or drink. And I didn't drink. I'm not a drinker. I've never been a drinker. I'm just like, that's just not me. You know, I've never been a smoker. None of that. <clears throat> but in the military, plus I was a virgin. Like you guys, seriously, I was a virgin until I got married. Like I've always been like one of those, one of those types of girls that just I was about my business and, and, you know, making my money and getting my education and all of that. <clears throat> so I didn't have time for the foolishness. I didn't have time for that. Not that there's anything wrong with drinking or anything like that. But <clears throat> what I saw in the, in the Air Force, people just take things and just go, just be way out of hand with it. <clears throat> but anyway, so cigarettes, <clears throat> people were smoking, <coughs> smoking cigarettes. <coughs> Excuse me. And I just, I tried it once and they would make it look so good. Like this is back in the day. Like this is when cigarette people, a lot of people used to smoke cigarettes. <clears throat> but anyway, and one day I was on the flight line and I was working late and it was the graveyard shift as usual. And <clears throat> I was bored to tears and my coworker had a cigarette and I was like, let me try one of those cigarettes. <laughs> And they gave me the cigarette and I was just like, I smoked the whole thing. And it was so, 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 so bad. It was like the worst thing ever. I mean, I felt like <clears throat> my whole body was a cigarette. And, and I think I only inhaled like one time because I didn't even know what I was doing. <clears throat> And when I inhaled that one time, I felt like my entire chest was on fire. Who was on fire? And I was like, who wants this? This is something you got to work on. This is something you have to develop. This is, <laughs> you have to learn how to like this. That's just how, <clears throat> same way that I felt with like um, alcohol. Like when I first like took a sip of alcohol. <clears throat> I think I was like 18 years old at the time too. And this is probably right before the military. And I was just like, I took a sip and I was like, why? What? <laughs> you know, I, you know, wine tastes like shoe polish, what I thought shoe polish would taste like. And I was just disgusted. And eventually I'm I grew up and I ended up selling wine and all that. And I, I could sell you wine, but I just wasn't really the type of person to be drinking it. It's something, it's a, it, alcohol, you have to like learn how to, <clears throat> you gotta learn how to like that. So I never had a taste for alcohol. I never had a taste for cigarettes. I didn't anticipate getting into cannabis. It just so happened that cannabis slapped me in the face and said, how you doing? <laughs> 
And I fell in love with cannabis because of its natural healing abilities and how it makes you feel and all of that good stuff. And I just, you know, I love it. But alcohol and cigarettes? No. But if you do that, I'm not judging you. Do your thing. You know, I still love you. You're still a human being. You're still a God. Know that. You know, so I'm not here to condemn anyone for doing anything. So anyway, I just want to come on here in here and say hello. 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 I love you all. Like, seriously, I have so much on my mind. Like, God, I've been just working and like emailing people and getting this course, pushing this course that I have and getting the word out there as much as I can about what I'm doing and just like, you know, being an entrepreneur, being an entrepreneur is something that you know, it's, it's rewarding because it's up to you. Like it's up to you. Like you have to make decisions. Sometimes you have to make last minute decisions. Sometimes you have to make hard decisions. Sometimes you have to adjust things. I mean, it's just like, you know, juggling, juggling balls. You know what I mean? (laughs) How does that sound? Maybe it sounds good to some of you. But nevertheless, being an entrepreneur is just like, it's, it's a challenge and it's also very rewarding. You know, it's like a challenge, a rewarding challenge. (laughs) You know, you learn so much from it and I've been learning like so much from working for myself and working for myself exclusively and <clears throat> even learning how to, to to pick yourself up, you know, when you have unexpected things happen, and then also celebrating when you have major, major mind blowing uh, celebrations and major success that just wow, you know. So it's it's a combination of these things, and like I love it. I would rather work for myself than. I would rather work for myself than go into a nine to five or, you know, or anything like that. Because like when you go into a nine to five, you're, you're on, you're on like someone else's time in a way. Like you, you have to abide by someone else's rules and, you know, like you have to go to lunch at a certain time and be back at a certain time and. You know what I mean? It's just, you fix my chapstick because that's what matters. Anyway, how's that? Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, get yourself together. You know how when it's time to like change your chapstick, but you're so lazy? And so you just you just be out of order, and that's not even the right. <clears throat> that's not even the color. <clears throat> you guys, I have to do this. How's this for a real video for you? But you must love it because you're subscribed and I appreciate it. I sure do. I sure do. So before I skedaddle, I want to show you a couple more things. Um, Excuse me. Excuse me. I want to show you a couple more things um, because I do. Uh, One book that I actually, when I first moved out to Cali, 
I went and I got my library card because, <laughs> because I'm a nerd and I love books <clears throat> and I totally support public libraries because like that's how I grew up. I grew up going to the library. My mother would take me, you know, and it was a magical place because I could read and, you know, just escape, <clears throat> escape and, and, you know, be in a fantasy world and all that good stuff. And it gave me something to do, you guys, like seriously. So as an adult, I think of libraries as the same thing. Like you go and you get a good book, right? <clears throat> So I went to the library and I got this book. This is The Great Goddess. I, this book came across my face at the library when I first moved to Cali. And I was like, okay, this is random. This is random. But I'm all about the goddess. So yeah. <clears throat> and I picked up this book and I'm telling you, it's so, so, so good. So it talks about, it says, in this comprehensive exploration of the goddess figure, Jean Markle, one of today's foremost Celtic historians, examines how over time patriarchal, patriarchal societies try to force the preeminent power of the feminine into an obscure and subservient position, shifting her solar association into masculine deities and discrediting those of her symbols, like the serpent, that could only be easily assimilated. So I was like, what? <laughs> Wait, what? <clears throat> so this book is basically about how you know, the histor the history of the goddess, the history of um that energy prior to, like it says, the uh masculine energy basically coming in and kind of like dismantling the um the matriarch, if you will. And it's a very, very interesting book. It's very academic, which is why I love it because there's academic books. <clears throat> they often give you places where you can expound on your research, you know, so they'll provide you with citations sometimes or different like references or what have you so that you can further your own study, which is absolutely what you want to do. So I love the book. I loved it so much that, of course, I returned it to the library like a long time ago. I <laughs> returned it to the library, but I found it. I forgot the title of the book and all of that. And then once again, while I was in New Orleans, I was on Amazon. <clears throat> and no, actually, I went on the library's page and I ended up finding like doing some studying and the, the name of the book like dropped in my spirit and long story short I found the book found it on Amazon because you know Amazon has everything between Amazon and Etsy between Amazon and Etsy and maybe one of those like clothing shopping apps or whatever I get my whole life together seriously <clears throat> so anyway this book I highly recommend it it's a very good book to have in your study because like I said it has a lot of just points that you can expound your research. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. I mean, like index of sites, museums, sanctuaries, and pilgrimages, and all sorts. Like, I love stuff like this. You put something like this in the back of your book, I'm all over it. <clears throat> Different notes. I mean, I just, I love it. I'm one of those people that study the notes because I love, I love learning. I love learning, you know? So here's another book, <laughs> speaking of learning and crazy principles at that. Okay, so this book, well, it may not be for everyone, okay? This is for you if you are like me and you are just like, you don't mind reading some some information that's just beyond, beyond, okay? Some stuff that makes you say, what? So this is the Complete Anunnaki Bible. <clears throat> this book is so crazy. 
it is so crazy. I can't even tell you what it's about. I won't even I, I won't even tell you what it's about, but just understand, understand and overstand that this book is absolutely amazing. I love it. I started reading it not too long ago. Let's see, like I'm on page 24 and I just, it, every time I read anything from this book, like so far, I've just been like, what, what, what? And it's led me to do further research. So again, this is one of those books that just, it just takes you, takes you by the hand and leads you to some places that make you say, hmm, very interesting. So, all right. But anyway, so I love you guys once again, and I hope that you can feel my energy, and I just send you a big hug. I <clears throat> wish I could just hug you guys up. Maybe one of these days I'll be able to hug you guys up. Maybe one of these days I'll do some sort of like a meet and greet, even though I think it depends. You know, sometimes people are interested in that. At least they used to be interested in and meet and greets like back in the day, back in the old YouTube days, buddy, back in the days of yesteryear. But anyway, anyway, I love you guys and I value you and I appreciate your time and your energy and all of that good stuff. And I just want to send you love and positivity and, and light and source. So I'll talk to you next time. Bye.